What's cracking, everybody? Thank you for coming back um, today, Saturday morning. And um, I had something on my mind. Um, so we're going to get into it today. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about the the famous riot, the infamous riot uh, in 2000 in Pelican Bay. Uh, to this date, it is the the worst riot they ever had. I'm going to get into a little bit more detail than I think I ever have, which for me isn't much. It's probably still not going to be that much detail. To me, the story I'm gonna tell is really about an individual, but I have to tell you about, I don't know, we're just gonna talk. You guys know I don't script anything. I don't, I don't, I don't write anything down. You know, a thought pops up in my head, a memory, and then I just go from there. So, um, I got out of the shoe in August of 1999, August 1st. Um, 1999 and um, one of the homies that got out with me I liked him a lot um, his name was Shorty I'm not gonna say where he's from people know uh, but his name was Shorty man he was very humble he had a lot more years in than me but he was really humble quiet dude very respectful um, one of those guys like you meet him you're like yeah, that's a cool homie right there right <laughs> So um, we went from orientation out to B yard, right? And, you know, B yard's all fenced up. And so he was in a different building than me. But, you know, I would see him in the mornings. Hey, one of those he has on me. Now, <clears throat> I've told you guys in other videos, the incident that led to the riot was uh, a black dude named Monster. He um, side busted on a conversation that that some Southerners were having in shop. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the black guy monster lived directly downstairs from me when the incident happened. And because of it, it didn't make any sense. They moved him from A section where we were to C section. So they threw the homie in the hole. And it, that's what, you know, one of the things that created a lot of, a lot of the tension. One of the first things. So, as I have mentioned before, and I think other people have mentioned that either were there or had heard about it, um, for months, people were working behind the scenes on the Mexican side and the black side to get this thing dealt with uh, so that it wouldn't lead to what it eventually led to, right? There were people that were trying, but um, there were also people on both sides that were throwing wrenches in. You know. So I want to say that you know I'm not going to get into the details, but you know the leadership on the yard. Remember that at the time there were no legends on the yard; they were still in the back, still in the shoe. So the leadership for the Southerners. Um, I will tell you this, um, they were not liked. They were respected. They handled their business. If anybody came on that yard that had an issue coming, they got it in a major way. So they were handling their business. They, respect, they were respected for that. But as far as liked, um, out of the five of them, there was only one that everybody liked as well as respected. The other four, they were not liked. Um, you know, people felt like they thought they were a little too big for their britches, um, but it is what it is, right? As long as they handled their business, who can complain? It allowed other people to do whatever they wanted to do and let them have the headache. Well, <clears throat> probably the real reason why that riot happened was during the months of dialogue, of trying to um, have Monster dealt with, 
other individuals were getting out of the shoe. And they were getting out of the shoe with um, ideas of personal um, grandeur, personal achievement. You know, they, they, they had an agenda within their mind that they wanted to be somebody. And they were on Pelican Bay's B yard, which was considered the gangster yard at the time. They were both gangster, but it was looked at more as B yard was more knuckleheads. And so these dudes would come out and, you know, and then people whispering in their ears, Hey, homes, this, this black dude did this. And, you know, he's still here and these boxes are slow dragging and, So these guys that came out of the shoe created a, a, their own little group. We're gonna call these dudes the Renegades, okay? Cause I'm not gonna get into names on either side. Remember these two groups are both Southerners. You have one that's already been established. Like I said, they were not liked at all, but they were respected. Then you had this second group, man. They were liked but the way they were going about things was not respected. You know, it, it's, it's very rare to see what happened the way it happened. A lot of times when people get it in their head where they almost, you know, these dudes are messing up. This is me, we're gonna take over. They usually just, they have the other crew whacked and those two crews keep sending their shooters at each other until the dust settles, right? That didn't happen in this incident in Pelican Bay. You had the group that was there, the leadership that was already established, and then you had another group there, the Renegades, that were going around and um, they were planting seeds, man. And my buddy Shorty became a part of that crew. And I remember when he became a part of that crew, there was him and another homie that I knew from the shoe, right? That I liked both of them a lot. And they got they got tied into the, the renegades, right? And I remember having a conversation with them one day through the fence. And I told him, I was like, hey, homie, like, everybody likes you guys, eh? But this ain't how it's done, homies. Like, like you can't do it like this. It's It's creating division, you know? We have this thing that we have to deal with over here. And instead of just focusing on this thing over here, now it's being clouded, you know, with, with this other thing, man, you know, the, the beef between you vaults is that, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's, you know, feed man, everybody's solid. And, you know, you guys are plotting on each other when we should all be trying to fix this one thing, man. And Shorty was like, hey, homie, you know, I got to ride with who I'm with, you know? And I was like, damn. And when you're in prison, you already know those of you that those end up not, no, not those of you, but those that are in there that are seasoned, that are schooled correctly, always know, don't pick sides. Eh? You never pick sides. It's not about the individual, you know, and these two groups were gearing up for war with each other while there was a pending issue that was very serious. Unfortunately, a lot of youngsters, see Pelican Bay was a, a, a shoe kickout yard. It's a level four 180. You come out of the shoe, that's where you go. It was a very, very, very serious place back then. After the riot, things changed a little bit, but back then, like you knew. 90% of that yard was connected to some very serious people. Um, they had some authority to do serious damage. Um, so everybody had to make sure that's where you really, you know, that saying, it's, you know, I know it, you hear it a lot, chess, not checkers. You play chess for reals on that yard. And, um, it was a very small percentage of dudes that were coming from the reception centers, youngsters that had never done time and they get there and they're, they're very impressed by their surroundings. And unfortunately they didn't have the proper schooling and had, didn't have enough time in to realize you don't pick sides. So 
you know, a, a, a lot of us, I know the dudes I kicked it with, we sat back and we watched these youngsters pick sides between the renegades and the, and the leadership. And we're like, damn, they're not connected to nobody. They're not connected to nothing. These bottles are going to pay a price. So, as you guys know, the riot kicked off. And whatever happened, happened, right? But then that's when things really got bloody, was after the riot. The riot was what it was, right? But then after the riot, the issue between the leadership and the renegades needed to be dealt with and needed to be finalized before everybody went back to the shooting. And I'm going to tell you the, the honest truth is the renegades, every time one of them stepped foot onto the yard and add seg in the hole, they got whacked. The youngsters that picked their sides, they either got whacked or they PC'd up. And I can tell you probably about 50 dudes wound up getting washed up behind that because of the selfish intentions of a handful of dudes. It led to that many people getting cannibalized, right? And here's the thing. Shorty never got hit. There was three of them that never got hit. One got kicked back out to the yard. Another one, matter of fact, I think both of them, I think, oh no, I think Shorty did get hit. Not bad, but he got hit. But, and the other one, him and his celly were supposed to go to the yard. And um, the one stayed in from yard. His celly went out and his celly got butchered. And I remember hearing a bar because I was in the, 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 the building next door in the ad seg. There was at the time four or five different ad segs, different halls because it was so, you know, all the warfare that was going on. And they asked the Sally, hey, why didn't you go out with your Sally? And he said, because the Lakers are playing today. He got famous for that quote, because the Lakers are playing today. So he, he, didn't, he, he didn't get hit for that. But. I wound up in the shoe with Shorty, right? I had gone to the shoe and it wasn't right away. He had gone to um, C2. I had gone to C10. These are in the shoe in Pelican Bay. Did my shoe term. He never got to get out. He got, uh, he was validated. Those of you that know him means, you know, he was identified by the state of California as whatever. Um, he was not a legend, but he was identified as something to where you cannot get out of the hole. Back then, you couldn't get out of the shoe. Once they labeled you that, you were never getting out of the shoe. Um, so, I, like I said, I had gone to C10. He went to C2. I did my shoe term. I got back out. I wound up coming back a few years later. Wound up in the same, um, right, right there in C2 with him. And I remember... One morning, they were handing out breakfast. And I told this story before, this part. They were handing out breakfast. And I guess the Buddha forgot a tray or something. And I, he went into that pod. I think he was in F pod. Anyways, he went into that pod with the trays, walked out and came back like five minutes later. And Shorty was dead. He had killed himself in that short period of time. And I remember at the time, you know, why, you know, the way it happened was, you know, the cop walked out, he walked back in, and next thing you know, the alarm got hit. Cops are running around everywhere. They take Shorty out in a gurney. You know, in Pelican Bay Shoe, you could be in the same building with somebody for three or four years, five years, and never know what he looks like. You know what his voice sounds like. But they had pretty much isolated everything, right? 
So after the cops all left, somebody yelled over, hey, Holmes, what happened over there? Dude yelled back. It was Shorty. He ain't with us no more. Okay. And like I said, Shorty was a friend of mine, man. He was a cool dude. And I remember one of his own homeboys came up later. And he's like, hey, Holmes, what's up with that? Hey, you hear that? You see what happened? You hear it? And I was like, hey, Holmes, but at least he took all his secrets with him when he left, right? And he's like, yeah. Those of you that know, you know what I'm talking about when I said that to him. But anyways, man, that's just, I don't know why. I felt like telling that story, man, where... This was a good dude. <clears throat> he chose to team up with a crew that everybody liked, but didn't respect how they chose to do their thing. Didn't agree with it. Went to the hole and he took his lickings. Went to the shoe and he sat there. And I don't know what um what demons he had. I don't know what was going on in his head, but he decided that um, it was time for him to move on to whatever's next for him. So there's today's story. Hopefully you guys liked it. Everybody stay safe, stay smart, and tell the ones you love that you love them, right? I'm out.